It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. You know where DJ's at. I know where I'm at, and I'm here with you. It is another DJ Roundtable show, and we do have a few DJs here tonight. Uh, we're after Labor Day weekend, so uh, like everything else, I, a lot of guy, people are out. A lot of the guys and girls are out doing stuff with friends and family still, or recovering from a long weekend with a lot of gigs. I know I am, because I had a couple of weddings this past weekend, and... I'm still uh, a little tired. Um, and, you know, as always, you know, again, we'll see who pops in. Usually a couple of people run late and hop in. But uh, as we always do, we always have a show here for you. And hopefully you're enjoying yourself. You're out there watching on Twitch. I thank you so much for coming in here. And if you can do me a favor on Twitch is make sure you're following the channel. Make sure you're watching everything and comment down below. You know, it doesn't hurt anything to comment. It's free. As well as if you're out watching this over on the tubes on YouTube. Help me slay that YouTube algorithm, as always known the beast, and help me grow the channel. You can do that by doing a couple of things. First thing first, make sure you smash the like button. Give it a thumbs up. The second thing, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. If you like the content, you'll see lots of that. Plus, I do some unboxings and some gig logs. I'm an active DJ, so I do a little bit of everything. Um, and then, you know, the other thing is that don't forget your bell icon to let you know what's going on. But one more step, share the video with some friends. So make sure you get a hold of a DJ. Hey, watch this. It's a great show. It's great stuff to learn, great stuff to watch. And maybe you'll learn a thing or two from uh, the show. And hopefully that's what it's about. And we're here to share. We're here to talk. We're here to have some fun. And hopefully you have some fun with us. If you're on YouTube, again, thank you for watching. You guys are greatly appreciated. And if you're a subscriber, tell me you know what you think of the show. Tell me what you like to hear, what's going on, what's happening, what's transpiring, and uh, what uh, you want to uh, us to cover on a future show as my phone is going off. <laughs> And uh, top tip, uh, make sure you always put your phone on mute at uh, events. You know, that's DJ 101, you know, and I did that on purpose. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to go with that. <laughs> um, I'm sure they bought that. <laughs> I'm sure that I'm sure the folks out there will take that. Oh, really? Oh, but that is a good thing. Make sure you got your phone. Um, I'm going to tell uh, this story here. We'll, we'll start off. In a second or two, we're going to we're going around with a couple of things. And again, we got Hunter and we got Sean from Georgia, Hunter from uh, South Carolina, and um, uh, what was it? Earlier this year, one of the officiants, I can't remember which wedding it was, uh, they had their phone go off in the middle of the ceremony, and they were uh, not a like a priest or a rabbi or a rigor pastor or anything like that uh he was a relative of one of the two um either a bride or groom i'm not going to mention who it is and stuff like that because that's not nice but uh yeah he forgot to turn off his uh phone so yeah 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 uh officiants are always fun uh, especially ones who got ordained just to do that ceremony for whatever friend family cousin brother sister whatever and a lot of times you gotta walk through uh with an officiant the do's and don'ts so i know uh sean you've i'm sure you've done tons of ceremonies like i have you're not like you know a, you're a veteran of it you're not the uh, first time out there if you are talking to a officiant and there's their first wedding you're doing or it's their 50th wedding you're doing what are a couple of things that you remind them of because you see you want to make them successful, but you see things like a lot of fishings forget to do certain things like, again, turn the phone off on silent. What are some of the things that you try to go over with an officiant to make them successful? Uh, remembering to turn a mic on, which I don't give them dead mics anymore. I give them an already turned on mic and let them know I'll handle all the volume controls don't touch any buttons on it because more times than not, I've had officiants not turn their microphone on. And then you're sitting there 
in the back trying to tell them, hey, turn your volume up, you know. And so that's a big one. Um, I always go over like, hey, don't forget to tell people to sit down. Uh, obviously, we've seen that happen a few times where they forget to tell everybody to sit down and they're halfway through the ceremony with everybody standing. Um, I use labs on my officiants, so I mean, I don't really have to talk to them about proper technique for holding the mic, anything like that. And then I just I discuss with them like, this is when you're going to be live. This is when I'm going to kill your mic. If you have announcements to make after the wedding party exits, I will bring your mic back live again. But just know from this time to this time, your mic is going to be hot. So anything you whisper to the groom, my microphones are going to pick up even a whisper and everybody is going to hear it. Um, so and then same thing if I'm putting a lapel on the groom, obviously same thing with them especially them because usually you got like best men and stuff coming up, giving them hugs as they're walking up the aisle. Um, and you know, once in a while you, you catch some stuff across those microphones that you might not have wanted the guests to hear. So one, just, one, yeah, of things, much... one of the things I do, and, and again, I do lapel microphones for uh, my officiants and I put one on the groom. I put, you know, two lapels, one the efficient, one in the groom and between the two of them, they usually capture the other half. Um, so, one of the things I always tell usually the groom is that I will not turn the microphone on until she's ready to walk down the aisle. So that way, when they get the bro hugs or chest bumps or whatever, they're not, you're not hearing that microphone bouncing against everything. The other thing also I try, if they have a boutonniere is try to hide the microphone in the boutonniere. And not only it's, it's, it's like hidden in plain sight because it's, 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 it's attached to something, but it's pretty easily, blend away and when they're turned you don't see anything but it picks up everything very nicely but yeah i have had efficiency and tracy i i love my wife uh <laughs> she's back there waving her arms like she's a bird telling everyone to please sit down please sit down please sit down so it, it, it's it's one of the things that i i she's been back there a few times doing that and efficiency even seasoned veterans forget to do that so that's one of the things and Another thing that we do, we always tell, it doesn't matter, new officiant or older officiant, is about a sentence or two before they end the ceremony to pick whatever side it is that's clear and open to start sidestepping a little bit. Just, you know, that way it's a direct shot of the, of the two of them. And if they kiss or embrace or chest bump or whatever the, it is, they it's the two of them and not the efficient looking in like a, you know kind of like a creeper looking over their shoulder like hey what's going on <laughs> it, 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 we don't want that so it, it's it's those things like those little tricks like that we try to talk to them and again working out timing is very important what you explain to your efficient when you turn something on when you turn something off i just feel it is it, it, very very important because the more they know the more successful the ceremony is we do this all the time and some of these efficients we run into uh this is their first time doing it. They, they, again, they got ordained just for fill in blank, brother, sister, mother, father, a cousin, aunt, uncle, whoever it is. And they're not usually used to doing this. And because we see stuff all the time, it's great to explain some stuff to them, help them out. Is there another little trick that uh, you can add uh, to your, we are so afraid of a huge pile. I'll, I'll tell you one of the things talking about like lav placement, I got a set of the uh, Hollyland Lark M3s, and instead of putting a lapel now on my groom, I'll do my lapel on my officiant, and then I like to tuck one of those uh, M3s onto the officiant's binder. So instead of having your second microphone over to the groom, it's in the dead center of the two of them, and I, I really like how that captures the audio a little bit better than being all the way over to the groom. Obviously, if they're not holding anything, then I go the old way I do in the groom. But I always ask, do you have a book, something that you're going to be holding? And I'll put that second mic on there and love the way it captures the ceremony. You're, are you using um, a, a, you're using an omnidirectional microphone then, correct? Correct. Yeah. Are, uh, are, are you using one that's designed more for speech or one that's designed more for sound, more like a boundary mic? So it's for speech, they're the Lark M3s. I don't know if you've seen them. Uh, I've seen them from videographers. Videographers have been using them for a while now. 
the downfall with them. They're at 2.4, so we know the troubles that come with that as far as possibilities to drop outs and stuff. But since you already have your officiant mic with your main lapel, using one of those as your secondary source, and, I mean, there's it's the size of a quarter. The M3s are round. They're literally the size of a quarter. Clips onto their paper, whatever, perfectly. And, yeah, they, they capture amazing. I mean, they, they can pick up a whisper. What uh, what brand is your main uh, body bank? Uh, I run Phoenix. So. You run Phoenix Pro? Yep. The I, I, uh, 71, I want to say it is. Okay. I run... So, multi, uh, multi-channel. I run depending on which set we're doing. If we're doing our standard ceremony set, it's Audio Technica, uh, and they're 2.4 gigahertz, but they're the ones that the uh, antenna actually can come out. You can run Cat Five cable to it and run it down to wherever you need to run to get a closer signal. But I really don't run into many dropouts out. They're very, very powerful and they're very, very uh, well designed. And then the other one, I other ones I have is Audio Technica. I have an Audio Technica 2.4 gigahertz, but I also have an Audio Technica standard microphone. If I use just one setup, my main rig, I have a Sennheiser uh, UHF uh, microphone already there for a handheld. I keep the handheld off and just turn the body pack on to that frequency that's scanned in the Sennheiser, and I'll use that as one. And on the other microphone is the 2.4 gigahertz Sennheiser, and I still have my handheld microphone. So. I run it both microphones through the microphone output and then one microphone through channel three on the four channel board on XZ. So it's it's one of the things that I try to make sure I have as many options as possible because we all know things go up awry. <laughs> I'll tell you, one nice thing I've started doing since I got the M3 is I just got them at the start of this year for wedding season. Um you can hook them into iPads and stuff and record off of them. So I've started adding on recording their vows ahead of time, especially when they don't have like a videographer for, or somebody who's going to do that. I will go, I will meet with each of them while they're getting ready for the wedding, hook them up with the mic, record their vows really quick. It's a nice extra hard $50 add on very little work on our end. So another yeah. little cool feature with those. I, I've I've done that too. Um, we've had them send us MP3s of the uh, vows and just say, hey, you know, just record it when you can. Send it to us. We'll just make sure they we they sound good. And then you know, again, if I need to add anything to it, edit a little bit, you know, here and then come out there. That way, I know one hundred percent beforehand. It's one hundred percent hot, ready to go, and it, it's good. And that's. I, you know, doing day of, I know a couple guys that do that kind of stuff or do video day of, and they put it on like on our front TV and stuff. It's cool, but also it, it, if you don't do things right, it could be a major disaster. That's why I like hedge the bed a little bit and say, yeah, I do a little more earlier than that. That way I know 100% it's working versus if I get something garbled and screwed up, like, okay, need to re-record this. <laughs> yeah. So that's why using those, that's what I like is you get such a clear audio out of them. That's the important. Thing. Like if they, if they were recording it off their phone or anything, you usually got some staticky background white noise going on. And so what I do is I usually overlay it over their first dance song, use stems, pull out the lyrics of the song and I'm putting their instrumental. vows, putting their vows over the instrumental of their first dance and kicking it back to them. But then you're playing their first dance already, and then you're taking it away from their first dance, you know? I'm not playing it at the event. This is for them to have post-event. Okay, okay. I thought, so they I thought get, the ceremony. They get, nope, they get the recording post-event of their vows, okay. them saying them back and forth over the background music. And that, so. that okay. And for it's a nice upsell for $150 to do that. Oh, yeah. And have that recording and do that. That's 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 a cool. That's a smart idea. That's that's a way you make more money. And speaking oh, of yeah. making more money, well, what? Well, I got, I got Taylor. Where's Jordan? Jordan was just right there just a second ago. Grabbing a snack. <laughs> Grabbing a <laughs> snack. Let me guess. A bowl of ce- oh, I thought it was a bowl yes. of cereal. Bowl of cereal is for after the podcast, buddy. Oh, come on, man. You know, you, <laughs> I don't need bowls of cereal on the podcast. That, that well, you, might, you could. Who cares? You know, who who doesn't? Okay. Who here still eats bowls of cereal? Who here, who here eats like Fruit Loops? And I got I got Rice Krispie Treats. Yeah. You, you know what's Reese's actually Puffs. another good one? 
Yep. Yep. You know what another good one, which I just just discovered uh, a few weeks ago? Uh, Molto meal, you know, the big bags of like the knockoff stuff. They have one for s'mores. It's like golden grams, chocolate little uh, balls. They're not like solid chocolate. They're like, you know, they're cereal chocolate, um, like uh, Cocoa Krispies, not Cocoa Krispies, uh, like uh, Cocoa Puffs and uh, marshmallows. Yeah, I I personally eat Raisin Bran. Raisin Bran, there you go. I like Raisin Bran too. <laughs> you know, I also like oatmeal too. It's it's one of the things that, yeah. you know, apple cinnamon oatmeal, can't go wrong with that. It's a nice hot oatmeal. But, uh, you know, speaking of, what was that? Golden grams or golden grams. I, yeah, I like my golden grams. That's why I like that s'mores one because marshmallows, golden grams, chocolate. I'm like, it, it, it's 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 one of the things, you know. But uh, speaking of uh, fun things, we were talking about. Uh, I know you guys just got in here, um, and it's it always greatly appreciated to see both you, the two of you, as well as DJ Brentley. Um, it's always great to see everyone here. Uh, the when you are talking to an officiant and it's their first time or their hundredth and fifth time, what are some of the tips and tricks you try to tell them to make sure the ceremony goes without very few hiccups? Like I was talking before you guys came in, uh, I had a officiant first time doing it. He's not a, you know, a reverend or a rabbi or a priest or anything like that. He's, you know, a friend, cousin, brother, whatever. And his phone went off during the middle of the ceremony. So the thing is that, you know, how do you walk through people and explain to people? And even though Tracy, well, Tracy and I told him to turn off your phone, he didn't. Uh, how do you walk through stuff with them and try to set them up for success? What are some of the things that you go through or talk to them or try to do with the officiant uh, before this, uh, the ceremony? You want to start? Um, well, I mean... I guess it would be more like at, we always go to the rehearsal. So during the rehearsal, we kind of just run through everything. And usually when we run through it the day before, there's not really anything to too crazy to look out for. But um, I don't know if I've ever actually told them to ever do anything besides like, I do. here's your mic. I, I When I tuned in, I... I was catching the end of Sean's, but um, I, he was saying, you know, the this is when it's going to be unmuted, um, all that. I do run through that with them. You know, it's live on your end. It's muted on mine. I will unmute it. You do nothing. It's going to be on until the ceremony. I usually mic them about 10 minutes before, but I do bring my labs and a small Bluetooth. Uh, I have the Mackie Thump Go 8, and we'll hook them up to that and run through it at the rehearsal so like everyone's already been through it you know it's not the first time they're doing it so and they they'll sometimes they do the whole thing or that you know they they do the the main parts and they're mic'd just like we would the next day and then we run through the music and we kind of do a dry rehearsal of it um, for most of our weddings unless the couple doesn't want us to come to the rehearsal or they're not having one but so I think no. we, we take care of a lot of it at the rehearsal, but I'm, I've am i never thought about telling them to mute their phone. That is actually a brilliant, brilliant one. I've never had that happen, though. It, it unfortunately, does happen. Uh, do you charge your customers for doing uh, rehearsal? Um, it's kind hard. of. It's part of our um, Perfect Day package, which it's okay. priced into. But um, if you were to buy our gold package, which is just DJ and it does come with ceremony audio, but it would be an extra cost. What was usually the fee for that? Taylor. You know, you know what's funny? <laughs> I never charge them for it. I just, I'm like, oh, you want me there? And then they're like, oh my God, yeah, that would be awesome. So then they just think I'm like super, super great. Which I plan well, on you are. Anyway. I just won't tell them. <laughs> no, I just don't tell them until like our final meeting. And then I'm like, oh, you know, I'll it, be at your rehearsal. And they're like, what? And I'm like. It is fixed into the perfect <laughs> day package price, though. I mean, yeah, but I've and, never actually like and to, charged anybody that was getting like just our DJ services for rehearsal. I'm always like, oh, I'll be there. <laughs> See, we we Tracy and I look at it as an additional enhancement to our packages because not everyone wants to take advantage of it. 
And it's it's our time. We don't charge our outrageous amount of fee. It, we charge two hundred dollars. You know, it's it's a couple hours where we bring a small speaker. You know, uh, we just do the music. We walk through things with them, and you know, we don't mic them because again, they're talking, and it's usually just for them to work down timing with things and songs. So if they wow. do that, it's 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 a small fee. Um, and again, you put it into a package. Smart, very smart. Our, and it, our perfect day package, um, we're kind of doing the, I, I call it the Bill Herman approach. The You get me and Taylor for this price. You're, you know, if you want the the vocals over the, the first dance and the, any of that stuff, it kind of just comes with it. Like, I don't charge, but when they're just getting DJ, which we a lot of times don't do that a lot. We we mainly do the perfect day package and we try to focus towards that and explain to them why. And um, it kind of helps us meet in the middle where we're not nickel and diamond you, but at the same time, you're not afraid to ask. Um, so it is kind of fixed into the price there with that one. Plus me as a person, like I have to like go over things and practice things like ahead of time or else my anxiety is like over the roof so just for me personally i always feel better being there. one one thing i would really like to do as an upsell is um dj like the after the rehearsal dinner like their little uh dinner thing they have the, the like dinner yeah dj i feel like so, it would give us a chance to um get to know them too a little more we we, we really offer do. that for a service and we offer karaoke, trivia, and music bingo as add-ons for the rehearsal dinner. And that's Brilliant. the only that's the only way I'm going to their rehearsal is they're booking our entire rehearsal package where we're gonna do their ceremony walkthrough and then provide the entertainment for their ceremony dinner. Well, I thought Sean, you just show up with uh, you know, your boom box and you start breakdancing yeah. in the middle of the uh <laughs> of the rehearsal. No, 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 no break dancing. You don't put down the cardboard down and start getting, okay, everybody, <laughs> just, you know, okay. <laughs> I mean, the head's probably got a good spin to it, you know, but no, no break dancing. I, I'll i tell you right now, brother, I, it, 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 us big guys, we can do it. <laughs> just have your, just have, your, have your wife push your legs so you spin around. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> Honey, push my legs. Might bust, out, might bust out the worm. That, that, that'd that be the extent of it. Oh, big guy doing a worm, <laughs> man. That's, that's always a fun one. And I'm just gonna throw this out there. We're usually not at a rehearsal longer than like 45 minutes because I got stuff to do. So I feel like we're pretty efficient. It's like you got this is what we need to do. Like this is our plan. Like let's run through it. It's not that hard, you know. It's really not. It's just figuring out who needs to walk out when, and then we're out. Sometimes they it, feed us too. So. I mean, which is kind of cool, which I don't expect it, but <laughs> <laughs> for me, well, it's giving up the event date. That's that's my only problem with rehearsals and why I don't do them unless they're booking me for DJ service is I'm usually booking Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Most rehearsals, if it's a Saturday wedding, is on a Friday. I'm not going to do a rehearsal for a couple hundred bucks or free and turn down a fifteen hundred dollar gig. A lot instead. of bars are on Thursdays. Luckily, they've been that's working nice. out that way. It seems um, to be what the venue's been doing this year. Yeah. So maybe that does help us because if it was a Friday, I'd probably be like, uh, yeah, especially know. if we're busy, we kind of like are like, but a lot of them, I've even had them do it on a Wednesday, like yeah. Wednesdays and Thursdays they've been doing them, which is great. Yeah, It throws me off because I'm like talking about their wedding that's tomorrow and they're looking at me like, no, it's no, it's not. <laughs> it's Saturday. I'm like, sorry. I'm used to this being on Friday. <laughs> One of the things that I do, uh, and we do as a company, we try to not back too many back to back because Tracy has a regular job that, you know, she starts seven o'clock in the morning. And uh, my furry daughter, who was just here, who I was petting, she, she's actually about six feet away from me laying on the ground. Uh, she likes to be up at like five thirty, six o'clock because she wants to go for a uh, W-A-L-K. I can't say the word because she will want to go right now. And Tracy will take her for one. And uh, yeah, she doesn't, you know, we try to get, she needs her sleep. Um, so we try not, and again, with family or that, we try not to do too many back-to-backs. I have a bunch of back-to-backs. I had a back-to-back this this weekend. We got a bunch coming up in uh, for September and October. 
but we try to not do too many back to backs. And one of the things is that yeah, I understand you're taking out a uh, possible day of doing a event, but that's why it charges a small fee for it. You're only there for a short time, and then you're gone. Plus, also again, uh, it's 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 one of the things that you know the customers come to you. They're you're taking care of it. You're helping them and helping them with time. Again, we do this all the time. Versus, hopefully, they're doing it once. You know, and that's it. Or maybe this is a second time. And that's that's this is it. You know, it, it's it's one of the things that you know it's it's a helping thing, and it makes you. I feel, and Tracy feels the same way I do, is that it's more of a professional level of service. And I understand, you know, Taylor and Jordan with their pack one package that has it in there. I, I feel that's I, I feel it's a smart thing. But also your thing that you're saying before, Sean, about taking recording their words to each other and then taking that and putting that onto their track of their first dance song and to give it to them for $150. I think that right there you know, it is a cool thing. And, you know, just like, you know, uh, having the, uh, um, the memory, um, the, uh, I got to pull it out the, uh, phone or actually it's a digital guest book. You know, the phones like this, you know, we charge $200 for this for a night and, you know, people leave 30, 40, 50, 80, whatever it is, uh, message on here having that vowel part, that's another enhancement that you can offer your customers and do that and make a few extra dollars, but also you're giving them memories. And I always say that as DJs, we try to create memories. The photographer and videographer is there to capture those memories. And if we can capture those memories for, for your audio about them talking or their, their vowels to each other or um, as much each other, I think that's a very, very important and very cool thing. And that's something I'm going to talk to Tracy about. Maybe add that to uh, in, add our enhancement package. I think that's very smart. Yeah, it's it's a great add-on. And saying the memory thing, our, our tagline on our website is literally, we're not just DJs, we're memory makers. So Yep, that, that's an important thing. I, I really, truly really feel that way. And, you know, talk about memories. I have a man in Ohio that was not here last week uh, and is officially... Retired as a teacher. He's officially is, is joined the DJ world full time. Mr. Dwayne Dixon. Congratulations, sir. Hopefully you enjoyed hopefully you enjoyed your last day at school, but it's not it's not your last day forever. It's just your last day for now. Mm -hmm. And uh hopefully you got the chance to enjoy it and your students uh got to celebrate with you. And congratulations to you. Now you're gonna deal with the world of DJ full time, like the rest of us uh crazy mm -hmm. people. <laughs> Um, question for you. Now, what I know you, you've done ceremonies, you've done weddings, and again, mm -hmm. you're also active in the church and stuff like that. But when you talk to an officiant for a ceremony, what are some of the tips and tricks you try and talk to them about before the ceremony? You know, we were talking before about, you know, telling them when a mic comes on or reminding them to tell everyone to please sit after they ask everyone to please stand or turn their phone off so there's a ring in the middle of a ceremony. Um, what what do we what do you have some of your tips and tricks that you uh, go over with an officiant uh, before the ceremony? I really never really had to um, talk to a the officiant because most of them, you know, they most of my um, people I run into have been doing weddings, so they're the pastors. So I pretty much take their lead. If anything. I just go over um, how to use the mic. If I bring my mic or my equipment and they using it. So I just go over that. But most of the time, they pretty much got it down. The uh, the thing that I run into, and again, I don't, I don't know if it's very prevalent in Ohio, is someone gets ordained, they go online, they go to a church or whatever, they get ordained, you get registered with the state, pay a few bucks, and now they're ordained minister, basically, and they can do ceremonies. And that's what I run into. It's not just, also the professional ones, too. It's walking walking through when we're going to turn the microphone on, when we're going to turn the microphone off, uh, when we're going to do things, what's the last things you say. You know, and again, just simple remind him. You know, I, I I've done it. And I'm I'm Catholic, and I told of uh, you know fathers, hey father, don't forget, you got to turn your phone off, please. Oh yeah, I will, I will, I will, and they do. <laughs> uh, but it's a nice little reminder. It's one of the things you talk to them, and you know, one other thing I when talking to them, I always ask them a question: is tell me your worst experience you've ever had with a DJ, 
And everybody's always quick, you know, photographers, videographers, venue managers will always quick and tell you, well, they won't tell you names, but they will tell you an experience they had with a DJ. And Tracy and I feel that we want to make sure that they had the best experience with us, but also that we understand what someone did. So we know not to do whatever that fallacy is and do the wrong things. Because sometimes people say things or they use the coarse language or they do something wrong. And uh, we want to make sure that we don't do that. So uh, it's, it's always one of the things, communication is huge. And especially with microphones and stuff like that, you know, your equipment, you're used to it. You know how to turn things on, turn things off. You know when to turn things off and on on the board. Uh, that right there is huge talking to whoever is doing the ceremony, you know. Uh, but when you also do ceremonies, do you do, uh, do, you, do you do the rehearsal? Do you go to the rehearsal? Do you offer the service? Have you been to rehearsal or you just do it as a ceremony? I just do the ceremony and um, reception. But I did this summer... Um, they asked me to come to the rehearsal, so I came. But then it was one of those things where um, it seemed like this group didn't have their stuff together. So they were at the last minute um, sending songs and all that. So it's almost like I had to be there to kind of like get the songs, then see where you want to put the <laughs> songs. So most of the time people have their stuff together. So they just tell me, um, play this at this time or this amount of uh, moments, and then I look for the go-to person to give me the cues, and that's pretty much it. But with this last one I did this summer, I had to be there because they were all all, all over the place. Oh, uh, you, you got to love that when people are all over and they don't, don't give you the music, and it's like, oh, man, I need, need that music. One of the things that Tracy and I do, and we do this for with ceremony, without ceremony, is we have a meeting and actually we have a couple meetings this week and this weekend we have no weddings, but we have meetings uh, with clients uh, is a final walkthrough meeting to figure out timing, figure out stuff as well as have them proof the music. So they actually listen to the song. And this is when we can look at timing for things and write that down. So we know when we're hearing it, where stuff is at. And sometimes again, you're a music, you're a music teacher, you're a music person. Uh, we're all music people here. Songs will have those little dropouts that will give you a natural break. That sounds really nice. You could fade out in versus sometimes people go, well, I want to stop at like, you know, 48 seconds. And that could be in the middle of a, you know, a chorus or something like that. And you're cutting it in half and it doesn't always sound correct. So that's one of the things that we do um, when we do that. Uh, do you ever think, have you ever like proofed a song with a couple or walked through a song before the ceremony to make sure it's exactly where they wanted to go off at? Cause again, uh, getting music that we get sometimes the timing can be different too, just because, you know, they get a track from you. They're looking at YouTube and we're looking at a track from a professional service that has more information on it or an extended mix versus a standard mix. Yeah. I always do that. Always um try to hit it meet with them ahead of time to go over the music, let them listen to it. And everything's got to be like time. Cause I'm, you know, doing school assemblies and then working in the theater, everything was timed. So I do it, but with this couple this summer and I tried to get the, when I heard that they were having issues with, um, with whoever was doing their wedding, the church people, I tried to offer my services that, you know, kind of like talk to them directly so I can get the ball moving. But they was like, no, nah, you don't want to mess with them. So I just went with their lead. But most of the time, I try to have that stuff planned out. So there's no surprises. And that's the thing is working out timing. <laughs> no surprises day of. Um, it to me is a huge, huge thing uh, when people have surprises. Uh, we don't want that. We want consistency. We want nothing. Oh, hey, by the way. There's always a little bit of variables with things. You know, things come up. Oh, yeah, by the way, Aunt Sue's having her birthday today. We want to sing happy. Okay. Uh, all right, fine. No problem. But we don't want that. That Oh, well, guess what? I want a different song now. You know, you're about five minutes before, you know, the start of uh, her walking down the aisle. Oh, guess what? I want I, I want a different song now. I, I just decided. You know, no, we don't want that. 
Um, you know, and that, that's a hard part is especially a couple who is indecisive to say the least, or they're just going to four different directions and they're not looking at all the fine things and mistakes happen. And we don't want that. So, um, uh, I'm trying to see now. Oh, okay. Sorry, Kevin. I saw I saw a chat. I didn't re get to it. So I'm going to get to the uh, chat real quickly. Um, I apologize to you. Um, inefficient efficients, you need to watch out for and just ask if they're new or are they uh, grizzled uh, veterans. Uh, new, you walk through the whole thing. Uh, definitely a benefit uh, to be there for the rehearsal. Um, oh yeah, uh, for going back to the cereal thing, uh, Kevin does not like milk in his cereal, he eats a cereal dry. I thought you were gonna say water. I I thought he's going for beer, so uh, beer, uh, no, he's not Wisconsin, you know, Wisconsin does that, you know, Br Brentley does that, you know, Rivers of the Nerds does that, you know. Um, Bradley also hangs out in garbage cans too much too, but we'll get to that in a second or two. <laughs> uh, he also puts mayonnaise on hot dogs, Kevin. I, I love Kevin. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no mayonnaise on hot dogs. We don't do that. It is no, good. No, Kevin, it Kevin is good. It. Mayonnaise <laughs> on a hot dog is good. No, no, you uh, got I'm two, sorry. you got two mayonnaise people now, uh, Sean and Kevin. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm from Chicago. There are rules about <laughs> consuming said hot dogs. Yes, there are rules. Yeah, I have the I have the stars on my arm for a reason. Listen, I'm, I'm not going to put to put mayonnaise on a hot dog. I'm not going to put mayonnaise on a Vienna hot dog. But if you're eating like a cheap Oscar Mayer hot dog or something, try some ketchup and mayonnaise on it. It's pretty good. Oh, I'd take your word for it. Is that a thing in Ohio, Dwayne, for putting mayonnaise on hot dogs? Uh, nah. Just no. mustard um, and ketchup and uh, um, relish. Relish? And yep. what, what about what, Indiana? Is mayonnaise a big thing in Indiana? I know you guys are just across the board. I have so. never heard of that until just now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, well, here, here, speaking, of, speaking of hot dogs, this, we're going to we're going to devolve into this for a second or two here. Uh, New York hot dogs. And I watched this guy in New York. Um, he goes around all these little New York places. They have onion sauce. It's basically ketchup, onions boiled together made into a, like an onion relish put on top of the hot dogs. They put sauerkraut and mustard. And, you know, as a Chicagoan, and again, Jordan and Taylor, you guys are Chicagoans too. Um, it, it's one of the things that ketchup on a hot dog is kind of a, a, a no bueno thing, you know. Now, do I put ketchup on my hot dog? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I, no, I don't. I'm not getting my Chicago card up. <laughs> hey, Hey, I'm 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 a Chicago through and through. I was I was I was raised in the city of Chicago, so I, I'm a weirdo. I, I eat with it just plain. You eat plain, <laughs> like, like Tracy. Tracy yeah. will have tomato and relish. She's not a big hot dog girl, so her eating a hot dog, I'm like, you want a hot dog? Uh, versus me, I'm like, hot dog, yes. Oh, <laughs> well, I get excited well, for super dog. So, yeah. you know, at Sam's Corner, when I get a hot dog, I put. Ketchup, mustard, uh, coleslaw, and chili on it. Coleslaw, see, that's a South Carolina thing. It's a Southern thing. The coleslaw and everything. It's like Wisconsin with cheese and everything. South Carolina with <laughs> coleslaw and everything. That, that's that's the way it goes. And then, <laughs> the cheese thing is very accurate. I'm not going to lie. You can get cheese with just about anything here. But you can go to a hot dog stand I, in Chicago and get a chili dog and they put cheese on Or you can get a cheese dog. Or you can get a char cheese dog. When you take a hot dog, put it on a char grill, char it real quick, and put cheese on top of it. See, that's a whole different dining experience. It's the chili cheese dog or the cheese dog. But the hot dog, because it doesn't have all that crap on it. You're not covering it in, you know, 5,000 oh. calories of cheese and chili. You know, it's a little bit of a lighter fare for those of us who, you know, like to keep their girlish man boob figure. Well, yeah, now, but the know. thing is, you know, true Chicago hot dog for you guys out there who don't know what a true Chicago hot dog is, is yellow mustard. It's bright green relish. It's onion. It's dill pickle. 
tomato. Now, tomato would be two ways, slices or chopped. Usually most places are slices or the wedges. Sometimes they're diced. I've seen that. The, the meal and the bun they ones. Do wedges much anymore. They're too cheap to make wedges anymore. It's a tiny little thin slice. Yeah. Gotta cut back on the economy thing. The wedges should be there. That's 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 a true Chicago way. A couple of them, it's a couple of Chicago stands, they will take lettuce, put lettuce on there, be, uh, shredded lettuce. It's called meal on a bun versus a hot Chicago hot dog. Celery salt, sport peppers. That's a Chicago hot dog. Now, how you want it, you know, again, out there, you're watching, you talk, we're talking food, not DJ stuff right now. However you want, it's the way you want it. There's no right or wrong. I'm not going to penalize you for that. So if Dwayne wants ketchup, mustard, relish on his hot dog, and if Kevin wants mayonnaise on his hot dog, and Sean wants cheese and mayonnaise and coleslaw and hot sauce and, I don't know, pork rinds or whatever on his hot Whatever, you know, everybody likes the different things on hot dog. And cool thing could have coleslaw and everything. Uh, there's no big deal there. And uh, Kevin, we still love you, even though you eat cereal without milk, which I just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just, it's one of the things that kind of foreign to me, but every, again, everybody likes different things differently. You know, no, now I have, I have grabbed hold like a handful or a little cup full of, of dry cereal and like just munch on dry cereal, just like sitting there, you know. Like I want a little snack. I didn't want much, you know, like you have like Cocoa Krispies or something like that, you know, or pe Fruity Pebbles, something small like that is, you know, taking a little bit, little handfuls. But that's like, you know, a, like a little paper cup full of that and just doing that. But it's not uh, sitting there and have a whole bowl, but that's okay. Uh, let's see here. What a couple other things he said. Anyways, asking, always asking skill level, the officiant and observing his or her skill during rehearsal. If lacking, take the lead uh, for the processional and the recessional and how they line up front. Yes, that's an important thing is helping them. If you're at the rehearsal, helping them line it up. Tracy does that. She That's her side of the business, the coordination time management side. But that is a, a very, very helpful thing if you do a rehearsal. Even just day of the wedding, if you have, uh, if you're able to do it you're near the ceremony itself, if you help them line up, it's it's one of the things I've seen people line up in the wrong or, order, uh, and then Tracy goes over there and says, "No, no, no, your order's reverse." You know, the best man in maid of honor, or the last ones to come in, the first person, the per person that's furthest out, goes furthest out, then the closest in. Uh, so I, Tracy's fixed that many of times because again, we do this all the time. Those people don't. And those are the things that help. Uh, let's see here, uh, Kevin says, "No biggie, no soggy." No soggy cereal, I guess. Uh, uh, beer matches my last name. Yes, we know. Um, it's meat. It gets Miracle Whip or mayo. If it's meat, it gets Miracle Whip or mayo. Ballpark hot dogs. That's his gourmet hot dogs ballpark. Uh, coleslaw, too. There you go. Cool thing. You and uh, Kevin can eat hot dogs over at Coleslaw. Uh, even uh, being enjoyed baked beans on my hot dog, too. Okay. Beans and a hot dog, you know, pork, you know, hot dogs and beans. Yeah, okay, I can do with that. Um, just a glass of milk on the side. So he has a glass of milk on the side and the cereal. Well, you know what? Um, <clears throat> Edward Blues likes uh, dry white toast, and Jake likes four whole fried chicken. So if they can like that, and a coke, you can add a coke. That's right, add a coke. Uh, if they can like that, you can like your cereal dry. In a bowl and a glass of milk on the side. That's that's very good. I still think maybe you should like get a mister, maybe miss the cereal a little bit with a little bit of milk. Just so it makes it a little less crunchy, not breaking teeth, but you know, what do I know? Uh song length you miss. Oh yeah, song length. Um where was it? Song length needed can be changed for length of walking and flower ring bearer. Yep, you're always adjusting that. So you can always look at it and work. That's one of the things working on timing is always important. So uh, DJ Brentley, besides uh, our gourmet experiences, uh, as far as everything, and uh, living in the beautiful world of lacrosse up there and uh, seeing uh, pictures of you hanging out with uh, trash cans at your uh, weddings. Um, hey, you, you know what? You, you got to hang out with something. You might as well hang out with a trash can. You know it's not going to talk back to you or ask you for money or hey, it's not going to do much of anything that set let me do what i want to do to it well oh uh, well you know, they, that's up to you 
that that is entirely up to you, sir. You know, um, that, that there are rules and laws, and then we we, oh, we don't encourage any rules or and laws. Then, and then broken. there's lacrosse. There's rules and laws, and then there's lacrosse. Well, yes, and we, as we always say on this channel, blue code uh, code blue cam. Go check them out on YouTube. Lots of lacrosse body cam footage. Code blue oh, cam yeah. on YouTube. Uh, Brentley is not on there. I have not seen him on there yet. And the keyword there is yet. I hope I never see him there. Maybe walking past, but never <laughs> on there being asked any questions. Just walking past, no problem. But uh, yeah, we uh, we don't want to see him uh, being interviewed or asked any questions because uh, those get really uh, funny on uh, with lacrosse. But in the beautiful oh, yeah. state of Wisconsin and in lacrosse area, uh, when you do ceremonies and you talk to an officiant, doesn't matter if it's the first time or hundred and first time, is there anything that you tri tips, tricks, anything to say to them that you tried to work out with them before the uh, the ceremony? Oh yeah, the first thing I do is the week of the ceremony, the week of the wedding. I shoot them a message on Monday or Sunday, and first thing I ask them for is their script. Or if they don't have an actual script, I ask about certain key points in the ceremony. Now, week goes by, we all get together again, you know, morning of or right before the ceremony is starting. And the other thing I'll do with my couple before we even get to that point is when we're doing our last phone call and meeting, I'm going to ask them, are there any people using my microphones that day aside from your officiant? And if there are, can I get their names and numbers? And I will shoot both those you know, readers a message saying, hey, since you're reading it said ceremony, I'm going to need to talk to you about how to use a microphone pop properly and all that good stuff. And with the officiant, and, and I will go over all that on Saturday with him as well or the day of the ceremony. But it also is contingent on what setup I'm using. 99% of the time, a lot of folks don't want to pay for my full ceremony setup, which is two labs, two handhelds, a uh, full-on mixer, and, you know, speak, you know, the whole shebang. So, one, they have everything they need there. And more often than not, they make their efficient play game show, can, you know, host by passing the mic or, you know, putting the mic to their mouth, which I'm fine with. Whatever works best for them. But I've coached them where to hold the microphone, how to keep it out of their mouth for picture's sake, because more often than not, you will see people grab the mic and ha go, sorry, but it's right in their face when they're trying to get a picture. A lot of photographers are, and you can see the frustration in some of their faces if you don't coach them who's using the mic, that I've never gotten the chance to get a good shot because the mic is blocking this person's mouth the entire time. So I'm coaching them on where to hold the mic for pictures and best sound with what I'm working with. So everybody can hear them. Their photographer gets pictures and everything works well. When it comes to like lab mics and all that, if I'm micing everybody up, then yeah, we're going to have a full run on of everyone who's got a lab. Just like Sean was saying, as soon as you I turn that on, you're going to get hurt. So I will keep all of them, and I tell everybody participating in the ceremony, I keep all the microphones off. Like, I will get the full rundown of the officiant script. All right, you're telling everybody, turn your phones off, be present, be here with us in this moment. And as soon as that's done, I kill the mic. Then, when I know it's time for the bride to be announced, I will turn that microphone back up so they can make their announcement. And then, then again, I'm going to kill it as well as killing anything. If everybody's wearing labs, all those are getting killed as well. Because in the video, you know, no one wants to hear the groom going, oh my God, she's, you know, or anything like that over the loudspeaker ceremony. That's kind of maybe him and the officiant can hear that or the wedding party. It's one of those more smaller, intimate moments that not everybody in the whole place needs to hear. So I will kill my mics at that point. As soon as I see... Uh, up the bride and whoever is walking her down the aisle right very near the very last seat before they get to the altar that's when i will turn the officiant's mic on and then move to anybody else's 
And then I will also coach them that when you're not talking, your mic will be off. So there's no, except when we get towards the vow portion of it and when everybody has to talk all at once. I'm not playing ride the fader game at that point because it's 30 seconds of you, five seconds, 30 seconds, five seconds. It's too much of a game to play. So I'll leave it on. And I should have everything dialed in where I'm not getting too much wind or BS like that. But I'm super conscientious about how I prep everybody for the ceremony. So, I mean, and part and parcel, we're selling our wedding packages, be it our basic ceremony setups or our full ones, to the point of I want to make sure all of your guests can hear you. So it might take a few extra minutes to make sure that happens with everyone involved but the end result is going to be exactly what you want for your guests. And that's the important thing. And, you know, one of the things also um, when you're going through everything with them and you're talking through everything with them, uh, do you uh, do any enhancements kind of like Sean was saying, as far as recording their uh, personal matches, each other or vows each other, and then take uh, music and uh, overlay it and send it to them or anything like that. Do you do any enhancements like that to them? No, uh, only thing I, I I will I can do it, but I don't do it often anymore because I start running. I, I think I have three hard. I want to say two two terabyte or four terabyte hard drives of every toast, every speech, every prayer from all my weddings up until maybe two years ago. And I'm like, why am I storing all this for the? You know, I mean, I recorded it and kept it for the couples in case they ever came back to me for it because I gave it to them. But now I'm at a point, it's like, yeah, if they ask if I can record any of that, yes, I can. I'll do it, but I'm going to charge you this. I, I'm not, because I have to bring more equipment out, plain and simple. So any enhancements like that, I'm not really trying to even sell or push. The only things I'm really trying to sell are, you know, the pretty elegant packages. And, you know, like when where Matt is, our DJ Solstice, is selling killer sound and killer light show. I'm definitely trying to sell. I will get obviously a solid sound. Like what I'm just saying, higher end sound equipment and all my gear qualifies for that. When it comes to my light show, now I can, and now I'm selling a couple different packages that I can produce whatever kind of light show you want. So my big concern is first and foremost, like my customer service, MC skills and handling all of your day. The second is making sure I create the look and aesthetic that you asked me to create. And then the last of my whole day is actually being a DJ. Because if I if we've gotten through everything else and I can't execute the mixing part, I shouldn't have done the first two parts. This is this is very true. And I but, think everyone here wants to have a ambiance for that wedding and give something. And every wedding is slightly different. And having different items, I know uh, Jordan and Taylor, especially them with some of the decor stuff they do. Um, I know the wedding this past Friday. Uh, I wish they would have been there for the decor side of things because uh, the company who did it would did a good job. But I know how Jordan and Taylor are. I would love to have them there to do the decor stuff. Um, Work together somehow, some way. Find a couple. <laughs> no, I'm going to get you guys there. That's the thing. I got a venue. I got to get you guys in. Uh, but, you know, Sean, he also has great great uh, stuff that he does for his wife. He's making it elegant. Dwayne does that, too, out of little touches. Uh, Hunter does that, too. So it's all these little things it's great to have and great information. The, the the big thing is that, you know, we all try to work with our couples and work with our officiants and everyone involved in that whole entire process. Mom, dad, aunt, uncle. We want them to understand what's happening. We don't want them to tell us what's going on because the only ones we, we respond to are the couples. They're the ones that, that signed the contract. They're the ones that are paying us. It's their day. But we don't mind listening to mom. Hey, can we do this? We do. Let me check with your daughter or your son or whatever. And that's one of the things also is communication because a lot of times parents want may sometimes they want to do some uh, cool tri uh cool surprises like Friday uh the the father of the groom danced with um his new daughter-in-law because dad is unfortunately not with us and he did that as kind of like the father daughter dance that she would miss out on. she got to dance with her mom but he felt horrible 
that she couldn't dance with. So, and during the, during the dance, uh, he said to her, I, I would love for you to call me dad. And Tra Tracy was, Tracy was, was, uh, tearing. And to hear that kind of love and that kind of stuff like that, those are the happy things that, you know, we have no problem su surprising a bride or groom with. But sometimes you get the parents to go, oh, yeah, we want to have a, uh, a, um, uh, we want the song for us to come down the aisle for the uh, processional. And I want you to break into like, you know, uh, Led Zeppelin or something like that. No, 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 no. That, that, that right there, there's, there's ways of doing things, making things sound nice and look nice. But there's also things you don't want to do and ruin someone's wedding. So I'm going to go to uh, beautiful South Carolina here and ask Hunter. Uh, Hunter, I know you've done weddings. Uh, when, yeah. you talk, when you talk to an officiant, is there any tips or tricks that you tell them? Or is there any tips or tricks they tell you? Not really. I mean, all I do is I mic them up and they and I let them go on their way. Because we usually have other people taking care of the rest of the stuff. So I just keep, take care of my stuff. Okay. And would you use a lapel microphone or a handheld microphone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I use a lapel. I only have one lapel mic, and that's for the officiant. So the bride and the groom, they don't have a mic or anything. It's just one lapel mic, which is a Chinese-made one by Hotec. And I bought that one like four years ago, and it's still working. That thing has, has been charged in like three years since I last did a wedding. Well, again, we're we gotta get you some weddings, Mayor Man. We and you're building it up over yeah. on YouTube, and you got some great stuff coming out. You get a great thing actually, in a battery, yeah. a battery. Yeah, I actually up. have a yeah, I actually have a wedding gig coming up in the next three weeks. Yep, we're talking about that beforehand. So we got we you got a gig coming up. We're gonna look forward to that gig log. Uh, yeah. quick, quick question for Dwayne. Uh, oh, there's a there's a puppy. Uh, <laughs> Dwayne, Jordan, and Taylor, and Brentley. Uh, I'm gonna go start with Dwayne first. What brand of microphone do you use for ceremony, and is it the same microphone you use for the rest of the time, or do you have a separate microphone that you use just for the ceremony? I have a Shure mic, and I have two of them. I have okay. one, one for me that's on my um, booth, and then I have another one that I hand out when they do um, toasts or announcements or whatever. Is it an SM58? Uh, it's still, it's not the most expensive one. It's not the cheap one. It's the one in the middle. The same one cool thing has. Okay. Um, the Hotec? No, um, the Shure mic, the wireless oh, mic. Oh, the PG-58 BLX, the PG-58 BLX4. Yep. So it's, a, it's an SM58 top on a wireless body. And that, that's yeah. a, that's a, it's a, it, it, it's a very robust, uh, microphone. Uh, it, it, yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a good well. microphone. I, I think. Yeah. I think. I think any popular brand you get is is going to be a good one. Uh, Taylor and Jordan, what brand of microphone do you use? And it's the same microphone that you use for your regular wedding. I, I'm dyslexic. I'm trying to look up how to say it. It's like Com Comica. I use the 2.4, like uh, for. Uh, they're actually for like DSLRs. Uh, what everyone's pretty much using nowadays, the little charge ones for the ceremony. And then I just use my normal handheld during the reception, which is uh, I have a Phoenix Pro. But uh, honestly, my favorite, and I've talked about this before, and everyone's going to hate on me right now, is I have a Voco Pro set that's really old that sounds incredible. Better than any sure I've bought, because every sure I've bought, I've sold. How, uh, how long have you had your Voco Pro set for? five and a half six years i mean it's no oh, wow it's lasted that long because everything in vocal pro i ever purchased was like maybe nine months at best and it's like <laughs> it it sounds good i mean it was one of those that came with four labs and four mics and the labs were trash i used them like once they were garbage but the actual handhelds on them i've broken one so i have three left and I only use two channels, and then I have an extra one, and I have the two channels wired into my mixer right in my case. It's a rack mount. I have a rack mount underneath my board. They've been flawless, but I don't always use them because when I use different boards and stuff, I have a Phoenix Pro. But, uh, yeah, I bought and sold many different chairs, and just they just cut out for me. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's me. I, I think one of the things is you – I think one of the things it's also it's 
what frequency band you're in. And it's, it's hard to know because in the Chicagoland area, <clears throat> yeah, Chicagoland area is different than, let's say, Milwaukee or from New York or from L.A. And every area is a little different. And I will tell you, uh, NFLX Pro, um, if you tell him where you're at in zip code, he has a master list of what units you should be on. And he can give you that, you know, tell you what one what you need for it. And if you don't like sure, he has other brands as well. But that's one of the things he will walk you through over there, uh, Ben Stolwell. Uh Ben's a he, he he's a walking genius. Um I, I can't tell you how much inf- the man has so much information I ain't funny, but he's one of the ones and there's a few other DJ stores also will if you give me your address, uh your zip code, they will tell you what uh what uh, frequencies you should be in work great for the area. There's a website too where you, I can't remember the website, but you can actually look up and it'll tell you what is on those frequencies, like which channels, what yep. broadcasting on those frequencies in your area by zip code. I can't remember the name of it though. Uh, I, I, no, I, I know I know it. I've done it before, and that's why I got that's why I got some frequencies from my uh, my sure my Sennheisers and my Audio Technica. It's got both Audio Technica handhelds and body packs. I'm sure. I want to say sure because I guess <laughs> you're sure. Uh, Sennheiser uh, handhelds and body packs, and both of them are in frequencies that are not heavily used. And that's the other thing is scanning as well. Uh, DJ you know DJ Brentley, I'm sorry, what? You know what frequencies? Uh, it is on Sennheiser. It is A1, and then on Audio Technica is I want to say channel A as well. But the A on Audio Technica is different than A1 on mm-hmm. Sennheiser. The Sennheiser goes lower and the Audio Technica is higher. But I, I always scan the, every time. Either the Sennheiser or the Sure website also have where you can put in your address and they yeah. will tell you the best mics for your area. And even if you're not buying their product, if you're trying to go something cheaper, you can at least look, see what frequencies their recommended mics yeah. are on, and then equate that to a cheaper mic if that's the route you're going. Yeah, and it, it's 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 but it's kind of it's hard for sometimes for us in the Midwest here, as you know, Sean. You're going all over the Midwest, and what happens in Milwaukee may be different. What happens in Rockford, Illinois, to what happens here, in Joliet, Illinois? The to... frequencies, the frequencies, even from somewhere like Wisconsin Dells Lacrosse are you go 30 minutes south into Madison and now you have just entered an entirely new realm of, oh, what do I have to dial out now? What do I have to figure out where I'm at? And more often than not, I mean, I honestly think that if I, because I do travel a little bit more than most of the DJs handling weddings around here, that I should probably be paying attention to. I'm going to be in this area. I should have these mics on these bands stored away to go down towards Madison, this for Chicago, this for Green Bay, Milwaukee. And Hey, you stay out of Chicago. Out. <laughs> oh, oh, I've got a couple I'm in the talks with now. Both They're going to be spending, what, $5,000 on me? I'm down. But well, I, I, I keep every, telling you, every time you come down here, we, we got to go to dinner. <laughs> they're getting everything but the photo booth for 5 k Hi. So, you make it worth your time. The- and Jordan well, and Taylor as assistants. I'm the one of the <laughs> best assistants around. <laughs> you get you get Jordan Taylor and that fat guy you can sit there and laugh all night. You know, <laughs> heck, I think you know Sean what? will come up for that kind of money and be your grody for that night. Hey, heck, we might even get cool things. I take okay. pride in being a DJ assistant. I'm a DJ assistant for what I like. A really good DJ that lives. Or is in our area, and I take pride in that. I'm like, hell yeah! See, I'm number and one. you all have to fight my kid to be the assistant to go to Chicago because if we're going to Chicago, <laughs> she's like, oh, I'm coming, Dad. <laughs> then you're working, kid. <laughs> but yeah, well, someone someone's got to run cable, you know. Heck, you know, she can do that. Oh yeah, Does Gaffer Tate. Yeah, uh, my, <laughs> my mic rigs are all Phoenix. I know Matt would be making a huge joke about it. But honest to God's truth, outside of me taking my 7,000 or you know, dual lab, dual handheld, like 71, I don't know what number. It's in the high sevens there. But down to Madison once and having a couple crunchy issues there, 
And I could see it was when the cab was going by. And I'm like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. I've dialed, I have found everything. This is the only clean channel I can find, and now a cab is going to screw it up. Great. And then a few weeks ago, I was using one of my, my older Phoenix uh, PTU-52s, and the officiant found the only dead spot in the middle of the field at this barn wedding. I'm like, how do you do that? There is nothing around us. But he found the only dead spot, and he, he being fairly well-versed in technology, he just turned the mic on, turned, turned it on and off, and for some reason it popped back on correctly, right? And he moved a couple feet, away, like a foot away from where he'd been standing. Everything was fine. And at that point, I upgraded to all my ceremony rigs. Now have PTU 71s, uh, my Toadmatic, because it does have the better antenna system. And my antennas are blocked by the TV. I've got the PTU 2U, which is just two handheld mics, but it's the top. It was their top of the line mic set until maybe a week ago, which I have to contact my hook up there to be like, yo, time for me to get my new stuff. Uh, and do I, I can't really specify the deal I have with them, but it's kind of why I only use their equipment anymore. And all my soundboards, like the one I'm using here in my house to the one that's in that setup there, my DJ booth, except for my toad, because they don't have a rack mount mixer. And all my wireless mics are all from Phoenix. Hey, you know what? Not to sound bad. They're going to give you stuff to play with. Run, run, run with it. Why not? Uh, one or a quick thing oh, for got... you. Uh, one or a quick thing, Brentley. Um, Kevin is asking for stickers uh, for trash can photos That's for cool. Ohio. I am Brentley on Instagram. You can find him very easily, or you can find him on Facebook. Instant matches. Look, oh, look, look, look right there. Oh, those are some pretty stickers. <laughs> I'm running out of places to put them. You sent me too many. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I only I, have five left. You, yeah. Forehead, forehead, <laughs> forehead. <laughs> you can pretend you're a college girl. You can really pretend you're one of my college fan clubs. Yeah. I was actually oh, it's thinking got... of putting one on my daughter's Chromebook. She has a case full of stickers on. <laughs> There you go. Oh, take yeah, a picture. Put it on, take a picture. And again, if you out there want to get a sticker, we've talked about this before. Instagram or Facebook, I am Brentley. He will send you some stickers. He will send you a bumper sticker. Take those pictures, hashtag him, and make sure you give him some love wherever you're at. Anywhere around the world, you know, I'd love to see some uh, Brentley stickers in Japan or in Europe or even in South Carolina with uh yeah. with with Hunter there. Send me your send me your addresses. I will be mailing them out. out. There yeah. you go. He doesn't have no problem with that whatsoever. So again, hit him up on Instagram or on Facebook and we'll do that. Sure Man, well. we we went really long in this one. And then uh uh note for you guys the tenth. We have the sound couple coming in on the tenth, uh, which is um next week. Seven days from today, we'll have the sound couple in studio. Well, actually, that's in studio. On here in the chat, well, I can say in studio because in me, it's in studio. Uh, they'll be on here and walking through some professional sound equipment and some questions for professional sound. So make sure you tune in for that. That'll be a, another great one. And also, hopefully, we'll see on the um, 17th. We won't be here in September because I have a wedding show. But the show after that, the 24th, um, we have, uh, we're going to probably have someone from Disc Jockey News come on. Uh, someone who uh, I also, I'm a Disc Jockey News. I I, I do their show over there. I'm a guest. Um, and uh, I may have uh, someone from there over here. Uh, one of the people who I'm on the show with. So you may never know who may pop up. Someone more, way more famous than me. You know, <laughs> I'm a nobody. <laughs> but anyways, I got to thank you guys all for tonight. I got to thank my panel. This is a day after a big holiday, after Labor Day. They're all recovering from long weekends. Uh, again, we want to congratulate Dwayne for his retirement. And uh, I know he's going to be enjoying uh, everything he does uh, with us. And I hopefully you enjoy everything you do with us as well. So this week, I'm going to pick Dwayne to take us out uh, tonight. Uh, and uh, 
Say goodnight to everyone because I saw I saw Jordan for a second there. He's like, I want to do it, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan and Taylor, you guys know I love you guys. <laughs> I will get you guys though. I will get you guys. I saw Jordan. He's like, no, don't dig me. <laughs> but you have a great voice. That's why you're a DJ. Anyways, <laughs> Dwayne, take us out tonight. All right, I would like to thank everyone for joining us on the DJ Roundtable for this week's episode. I hope you have a great week and see you next week at the same time, 9 o'clock. Peace out!